We're here to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's May 19th here in Seoul. I'm Shin Yun, and this is News Generation, where we make the news at Arirang's very own open studio. Every morning, we'll discuss the top issues and latest current affairs affecting people in their 20s and 30s. Joining me in the studio is Walter Lee. Lovely to be here. Good morning. And Niall Song. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Now, both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. As usual, let's start with our news feed. The news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending on social media over the past 24 hours. The first story, South Korea's biggest portal companies, Neighbor and Kakao, have decided to regulate malicious or inappropriate comments from being made on their news portal sites. From next month, Neighbor will display whether a user has been restricted from leaving comments. To lift such restrictions, the user must solve a quiz. Kakao, which man is, manages the next biggest portal down, said it will refresh top comments so that users can see what more people have to say about each news item in real time, rather than being swayed by the top comments that have the most likes or replies. Now, recently, a woman in Shanghai published an advert looking for a personal nanny. More specifically, the ad was looking for someone who would be willing to kneel down and act like a servant girl from the distant past. The prospective employer said she would be able to pay up to 20,000 US dollars a month. Applicants also needed to be taller than 165 centimeters, weigh less than 55 kilos, at least have a secondary school degree, and be able to sing and dance well. While some said they were interested for the large salary, others said the requirements went backwards in time. Lastly, the Japanese government shared its plans to serve food made from Fukushima ingredients to the heads of state at the G7 summit. This shows Tokyo's efforts to alleviate concerns over the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, and local media outlets interpreted Japan's actions as a way for the country to promote how safe the agricultural and marine products from Fukushima are just ahead of discharging its treated water into the sea. Now we're going to take a closer look at the third news items. Leaders from the Group of Seven have been flying into Japan to attend the summit in Hiroshima that kicks off from this Friday. Now, this includes the heads of the U.S., Britain, Canada, France, Germany, and Italy. South Korea's President Yoon song yeol will also travel to Hiroshima to engage in trilateral discussions with both the leaders of Japan and the United States. And it's not the first time Japan has decided to give out food made from ingredients found in Fukushima at big international gatherings. Back in 2021, during the Tokyo Olympics, officials used ingredients from Fukushima to make the food for the athletes, and Korea at the time provided separate meals for its athletes and made sure they didn't eat anything made from Fukushima. So we're now going to expand our news feed here to the studio. Now, what do you guys expect about this? And do you think all the leaders there will be eating the food prepared? Or, and if you were there, would you feel safe eating food made from the ingredients in Fukushima? Hmm. To be honest, I've actually hit a place in my life where I've started taking care of my health and, you know, watching what I eat and things like that. However, I realized that being super obsessed and nitpicky about everything and trying to avoid certain types of food can be, you know, also stressful Very and stressful. tiring. So my philosophy now is to just do your best, try to go for the healthy foods when you can, and take all information with a grain of salt, yeah. whichever side it comes from. And while I will try, I, I haven't really had that much encounter with with food from Fukushima, and I guess I will in the future. And if I'm given it, I will eat it. I'll be okay. Okay, then what about you, Walter? <laughs> well, I guess like most people are worried about radiation poisoning. Mm -hmm. I, guess, I guess that's the main thing. And some obviously people here in South Korea don't trust the Japanese government in their mm -hmm. assessments. And we've come back with you know reports of our own saying right. you shouldn't eat it. But you know, I, I've eaten a lot worse things in my life, to be life. honest with you. Like my my second favorite drink is Coca-Cola. Ah. And um, I'm pretty sure that wasn't meant for human consumption ever yeah. because it's not good for your stomach. But you know, I just think, uh, like Niall said, I've gotten to a point where there are so many things that you shouldn't eat or they say that, you know, wash your vegetables very clean because the wax on the apples is, is going to kill you or so. Yeah. I just want to, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I just want to eat and I want to eat without thinking that this is going to kill me. Right. You know yeah. what? I think 
the bigger issue, though, is that even though South Korea is expected to send off its inspection team, and we're hearing so many experts say that there isn't any risk from consuming goods from Fukushima as long as the water is being treated very well, mm. a lot of people can't trust that because they're not at the sites themselves to see what's happening, whether the purifying process is all okay. So I guess we need to see more developments mm -hmm. in the future and see what happens. And that was our news feed for this Friday. Why don't we change gears to our discussion topic? Now, every May 21st is Married Couples Day here in Korea. Now, take a look at the screen to find out more. Back in 2007, the Ministry of Government Administration and Home Affairs declared May 21st as Married Couples Day. Officials aim to celebrate the concept of marriage, which they defined as the root of all families. Why does it fall on this date? Well, it's because May includes a lot of family-related holidays like Children's Day and Parents' Day. Also, the number 21 represents two becoming one. On the subject of marriages, Statistics Korea found out that last year the number of couples who got divorced came down by 8% compared to the year before. Most who did decide to split up were in their early 40s. In other words, they were millennials. That's what NewsGen aims to focus on today by answering three questions. 1. What are some key traits behind young married couples in their 20s and 30s? 2. Do their distinctive traits lead to conflicts? 3. What does the new generation think is the best way to sustain a happy marriage? Or do they think this is even necessary? So Sunday's Married Couples Day here in Korea, a day to commemorate and celebrate all the wedded couples out there and wish for years of happiness. Now, not a lot of people know that May 21st is a day for two to become one. And on news, Shen, you two are the only ones that have a married spouse, right? Mm -hmm. Now, so why did you guys even know that on Sunday, it's Married Couples Day, and are you planning to celebrate it? Well, like you said, me and Niall have been married for five wonderful years. <laughs> happy, so. happy. Yeah, to somebody yes. else. Yes. To somebody else, right? <laughs> Not to each other. That's what she says. But, like, <laughs> but yeah, I actually didn't know about this at all. I um, mean, to me, it really doesn't make sense in that way because I thought marriages were supposed to be more personal. Yeah. yeah. And so I think couples, married couples, and couples in general, they'd rather just celebrate the day that they got together, which I have forgotten. <laughs> so, it, but it makes it more meaningful, right? When it's more personalized. Right. Um, it sort of reminds me of that news feed we covered not too long ago about those married couples, about 800 married couples getting- 8,000 eight, couples. Yeah, 8,000 couples. A joint ceremony, can you I believe mean, it? That's insane it's to me. scary. <laughs> yeah, but is this just like one of those commercialized things like white day? Like, yeah, I, I yeah. think that's what it feels like to be honest with and you. And if you look at it, remember, as you could hear in the video, they say it's the 21st because two becomes one and I think a lot of Korean holidays have that they have that number the digits. Thing, the number play regardless yeah. will you celebrate this day and did you know about it you know I only found out a few years back that this existed mm. and I feel like it's kind of like oh national puppy day national sibling day I mean not to say that those aren't great but it's like another day to post things on right. uh, you know social media and say hey I have a spouse <laughs> um, but you know my wedding anniversary is actually in May so that adds to another list of things that I need to do in May on top of Parents Day Mother's Day and you know other birthdays around and so I don't usually celebrate it, but you know, I think if it's a day to promote maybe like a healthier marriage, giving more tips on, you know, mm -hmm. there's more organized event, then I, I guess it would be meaningful. But up until now, I, I don't really know much about much about those events. Exactly, but you nailed it. That's exactly what this day is for, to promote better and healthier marriages world, worldwide, actually in Korea, because it's mm -hmm. Korean national holiday. Mm. But here, why don't we now talk about the key traits young married couples have, because we're news gen. Yeah, oh, exactly. So like, I mean, when I think about marriage, I, I, I actually think about my parents, right? But they're divorced, not to go that deep. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> when they were married, it was traditional, right? To get married, have kids, and, basically die and pass everything on and goes the circle of life, yes. right? Circle of life. Exactly. <laughs> so those dates have changed a lot with people of our generation. Mm. Speaking for myself, even though I am married and I do have a kid, I know I've got plenty of people around me who aren't wanting to do that. They don't want to get married. They don't mm. want to have kids, right. which is fine. And this is just the way things are changing. Uh, you know, instead of marriage, people are also having life partners mm. instead. So they don't really want to have that, you know, a contract agreement mm. that you are a married couple or some people are just wanting to be with different partners for the rest of their life. I think this is our generation changing the whole marriage trend and who knows in 50 years 
if we're even gonna have like yeah. marriage or anything. Right. Who knows just... what the trend's gonna be then? Yeah, I know. Exactly. Who knows what the new generation at the time will change then? Yeah. But what you, would you like to add a few more key traits yeah. of young married couples, specifically those in their 20s and 30s? Yeah, and I feel like the generation, this current generation, the modern couple is a little more career focused mm -hmm. for you know both parties, both spouses, and you know it could be the financial burden. Right. You need to make money on both sides to make you know make ends meet, as well as their passion for work. Mm -hmm. But due to this, I think a lot of the traditional gender roles have been able to kind of blend according to schedule and you know the right amount of work. So I think personally, I love being outside. I love meeting new people. Mm -hmm. So I'm a freelancer who goes outside to work and my husband who's a musician mm -hmm. he works from the studio at home doesn't really leave much so he does a little bit more of the housework while he's there oh i see so yeah. it's definitely different from traditional times yeah for sure yeah. and if i add one more key trait i hear that more young couples have decided not to have kids and both work and we call that dink double income no kids right walter right right so like this is my wife and i original plan mm -hmm. right we, we weren't going to have kids but obviously things change and this is also different from when i was growing up where latchkey kids were the kids who stayed at home while both right. parents went out and worked but uh this is just how this is just uh, shows what our generation is like mm -hmm. these days but now the trend is changing where couples are wanting to spend time as just a married couple mm -hmm. right um, and nothing else that means just living together not having to worry about the financial burden of raising a child so like it turns out like in 2017 35 percent of mz couples in korea um, didn't have children within the first five years mm -hmm. of them being married now this has actually increased up to 42 mm percent -hmm. so as we right. can see it is increasing people aren't wanting to have kids or at least choosing to have kids later on in right. life because they know the stress that comes with raising sure. kids. Mm -hmm. They know that the financial burden that comes with raising kids. Like, I know that and mm. it's very difficult. It is very difficult as we've been seeing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, so four out of 10 millennial and Gen Z married couples aren't trying to have kids. And mm. I think the bigger concept behind that is because everyone wants it to be equal. You know, if you mm. have kids, it's some people might think it's more burdensome for the woman and so on and so forth. Yeah. So equality is a key concept that encompasses millennial and Gen Z married couples. So what do you think about that? And mm. now, don't you think sometimes it's too excessive to the point that these couples just might want to split up. Right. I mean, I think we actually had another episode on NewsGen talking mm -hmm. about when couples split up, they really like to split everything up right. down to their assets and, you know, things like that. But I think in such ways, many people have already the system for, you know, money, assets, and even how they spend each other's time. And for example, I saw this post online saying, oh, you know, because we're going to see your parents, we're going to use your money for the gas you're going to drive oh us to goodness. your parents. And oh, because we went there for one day, we're going to my parents for one day as well. That's so and calculative. It it is. It's very, you know, you have to calculate down to the last digit. Exactly. But I think in the younger generation's mm. defense, it started off by saying we want healthy boundaries mm. and we consider partnership to be more than just being dependent on each other, but, you know, living our best lives side by side. But, you know, with that being said, it's, you know, it's been difficult because people are making it almost by making it cleaner. It's easier mm -hmm. to split up and you know i've seen that divorce rates about 23 out of 1000 people mm -hmm. in amongst millennials just mm -hmm. millennials have been getting divorced and you know this just goes to show the cleaner you make it maybe it's easier to split up and though we're seeing divorce rates fall down that's only because we're not seeing as high as marriage rates compared to the past right right, right. i think it's like walter was saying about kids people take a longer time to maybe consider having kids mm -hmm. or even getting married to start with mm -hmm. they really think about whether i want to spend more time with this person for the rest of my life so exactly. yeah less marriages less divorces <laughs> All right, but speaking of divorces, let's now include a family attorney in our talks to extend our discussions.
As we mentioned, equality is a key word defining young married couples these days. Even though marriage is about becoming one, it seems like neither side wants the shorter end of the stick or wants to make too many sacrifices. That's why there are a growing number of young couples who decide to get divorced. And we have with us a family attorney here in Korea who helps out foreigners and multicultural families go through this. So she's going to be providing a bit of a global aspect on today's discussion topic. Please welcome Chun Sumi. Welcome, Sumi. No. <laughs> All right, Sumi. So I would like to ask you the first question, looking at your clients. Why do most come to you and why do young married couples usually file for divorce? The reasons for young couples' divorce are more diversely than expected. Typical reasons include spouse affair and oh. cheating and domestic violence. In addition, uh, divorce due to disputes between parents-in-law and daughter-in-law and mm -hmm. father-in-law and son-in-law are increasing. In addition, in recent years, economic problems, as you know, are caused by investment mm. failures in real estate, stocks, mm. virtual currency, and coins are also increasing as reasons for divorce. Mm. Would you also say that the tendency to want equality affects divorces? Yeah, tendency is uh, equality divorces is the same things, I think, the because of the, uh, the, in the case of the international marriage couple, for example, the conflicts often arise due to their mother's tongue and cultural differences like that. So we have to think, consider about it when uh, full living in South Korea and international marriage couples case is getting serious than before. Mm. And what would you say are some of the key traits of a young international married couple? Like what are the main conflicts that happen because of them? Mm. Mm. Uh, because of the, as you know, in case of the international marriage couples, the conflict of them rise due to their mother, as I mentioned to you, because of the, mm. uh, there are big differences, the cultural things, and mm. the, they cannot, okay, they cannot each understand, fully understand yeah. each other's. Uh, in case of the international marriage, it, it is common for couples who have been married in an arranged relationship, rather oh. than relationship to have a short period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, just they just fall in love very short time and easily and oh she's she's my fate I, mm -hmm. I wanna <laughs> uh, date with her or uh, getting married with her like that case so in mm -hmm. the in this case it is difficult to form a mature consensus as you know so and this course arises it is uh, this often comes a uh, vicious cycle that affects children's education and community support is needed for this, I think. Mm -hmm. oh, so as a family attorney, you've seen a lot of different kinds of divorces. What would you advise or recommend for young couples who are getting married just now uh, to have a good marriage? What's your advice? I think that it, it, it could be very similar to those Korean couples and the international couples. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is understanding each other. So mm -hmm. be, uh, it is, it's, I think that it is essential to have sufficient dating period and have time to narrow and differences in thought between each other before getting married. In particular, mm. in order to overcome cultural differences, it's a big matter, cultural dif differences. So, because of the, it, it, it is bringing the misunderstanding each other's uh, thinking and position. So, mm. uh, maybe I think the international marriage case, they have to put a lot of uh, effort for understanding each other. And uh, 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 how about, the, I, I always suggest to them, how about uh, the run, the, uh, opponent language and mm. understanding it, it could be more helpful for understanding each other and the mm. cultural differences mm -hmm. and the best way to resolve the conflict after marriage it is to talk i think the talk yeah. is the most important thing between couples as you know uh, through many conversations conflicts can be reduced and better relationship can be uh, developed i think mm. 
And yeah. in order for you to talk among international couples, you need to learn their language. That's yeah. a very essential part. And as you mentioned, now that marriage isn't a must, but it's a choice, maybe thinking it out whether this partner would, you know, we should be ending up for the rest of our lives. Right. Considering that and communicating that are very two key essential points you mentioned. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right, and before we continue our talks, let's also hear from our global viewers. So we asked them what, what they view on young couples and if they could list out a few key traits. So take a look at the screen on what they had to say. Tara Spell said millennial and Gen Z couples generally have a greater awareness and openness about mental health issues, and this influences their understanding and support for each other in times of emotional distress. Guerrilla Radio TM said, if you both are comfortable enough with each other to talk about issues and things you want, I guess that's a decent foundation for a decent relationship. Asian Prince said, based on my observations, young couples often use smartphones to reach each other when they're not together. Now, these are some traits that our viewers thought young couples had. Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned throughout our prior discussion and our talks with uh, Sumi, we realized that there's also many other traits, mm -hmm. including equality mm -hmm. and right. also the need to be communicating better with your so partner. So important. Communication. So, exactly. Would you guys like to give our viewers some suggestions of your own mm. as two married people? Uh, Mm -hmm. As to how to better sustain couple. a relationship, starting with Walter. Okay, so I thought a long and hard about this question because, mm. I mean, we are still quite young and both of us are mm. married to different people, but, <laughs> but quite young in our marriage, yeah. right? So I've only been married for, I think, what is it, four years now? Mm. But yes, obviously, equality is what we want and this is what we are doing. So we're both working, we both share house chores. I do more of the cooking, but, Are you sure about that? <laughs> but, but I actually like cooking, so it's fine. Um, but here's the thing. I honestly spent a long time thinking that every couple is different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And though we do want this equality in our society and we should get it, there are some couples out there who are happy with the traditional norms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as an example, I have a friend who he and his wife I have the understanding that he is the provider, she okay. is the home carer, mm. and that's it. And to be honest with you, they're not a, I don't think they're a happy couple, but <laughs> they're a couple that just have that agreement, right. and that's the way they're getting on, and they're both fine with that, mm -hmm. right? But yes, of course, I think to live in this society, you need to be equal in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. And you, in order for you to reach that type of agreement, as Sumi mentioned, it all comes down to communication. Exactly. You need right. to be talking with your partner and seeing if you guys are on the right terms. Mm -hmm. What about you, Nell? Give us some, you know, wise advice. The wise, yes, yes the <laughs> wisdom. You know, Walter is right. You know, every couple is different. And if you have worked it out between yourself, it's great. You know, with the work and life balance thing, if you've talked it out with your spouse, whatever floats your boat, as we say. <laughs> and, you know, I I think equality has been emphasized due to you know oppression in the past but i think it doesn't necessarily have to be net equal in numbers mm -hmm. every single time right. if you know what i mean so whatever the couple has worked out and whatever makes them happy they should do mm. and, and remember, communicate it communicate it and remember it's different for every couple mm -hmm. and all right we'll be here every day from 9 30 to 10 a.m korea time bringing you more topics young people are talking about special thanks to walter lee lovely to be here and now song no problem all right Thank you everyone for watching. Have a happy married couples day. And we are <laughs> News, News Generation. Generation.